Good evening. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting on Tuesday, October 3, 2017. Uh, the board was in executive session prior to this for um, to discuss strategies for uh, in respect to collective bargaining that would be detrimental to the public of the town. Uh, so let's start our meeting as we always do with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Excellent. All right, so as we do for every uh, Board of Selectmen meeting, we're going to start with the uh, public session. If anyone out there has something they want to talk about that it's not on the agenda, this is the time to do it. Hi there. Hi. Just Dean Anderson. Um, I'm here seeking permission to use part of Center Trail to do a Halloween trail walk for the children on Saturday the 29th. Um, I would just like Main Street to Mr. Terry's field, and I have permission from Mr. Terry to put games and stuff in the field, and I also have permission from the daycare center to use a parking lot if we need to do that also. Daycare center, that the next generation. Next generation. Okay. So I was told that I needed to ask permission from the board to use that much of the, the trail walk because we want to put little decorations for the kids to walk down and then the field to do some games. Sounds like a fun project. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Kamalu, for something like that, do we need anything like, we don't need anything for insurance or anything like that, right? Waivers? Um, through the chair, perhaps the starting point is when do you want to do this? Uh, it's August, uh, October 29th. So October 29th. Okay. We have another well, meeting between now and Exactly. Then. So my suggestion, respectfully, is that the board authorize 24. town staff to work with you and then report back to the board at its next meeting. Okay. So, so Mr. Terry, might if I jump in here? Jump right in. So we can't jump on a topic and make decisions without it being on the agenda so no, that I all the public understands, right, what we're going to talk about tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I personally have no issue using the center trail in a way like this, which I think is very community oriented, but I can't tell you that officially because we can't take a vote. Um, but my sense is if everybody does their work, we could probably figure this out. Yeah. Yes. Right? So time will not be wasted if we all do the appropriate things. Yep. Yeah, no, right? no problem. I can't imagine anyone on the board being against yeah, So it. even though our next meeting is the 24th, you'll have a good indication on how things are going. <coughs> okay. Yes, and in fact, preliminarily, based on the, the ownership of the different portions of the trail that you are interested in, uh, you will need to um, contact the school committee, hold, and I think you already contacted Terry uh, for their permission. Mm -hmm. So, but contact our office tomorrow, we'll begin working with you on this. Okay. Why yeah. the school committee, Mr. Kamala? Because, I believe that doesn't go anywhere near the school. The, 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 the okay. yeah, the land. It? Yes, mm -hmm. the land is under the jurisdiction of the school department. The trail is part of, a part of okay. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So we'll work with you, Christina. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Sounds like fun. Yeah. Sounds like fucking fun. I just hope Halloween doesn't get canceled because it's. I can get the new commission to do it. It will be Halloween. <laughs> I can guarantee you, Halloween will not be canceled if there's <laughs> snow this year. <laughs> Especially if Mr. Catino doesn't make it here and I get to be the chair again. <laughs> Come on, let's hurry up. All right, so uh, is that it for public forum? No one else has anything? All right, so the next item on our agenda are, is the consent agenda, uh, where we will approve the, consider approving the, the minutes from the 926 meeting, the <coughs> marathon fund request, the police and fire department donations, um, and that's it. Anyone want to break any of those out? Three, please. Item three, you got. Mr. Chair, I move items one and two as submitted. Can I second that? You can. I will second that. Mr. Stari, not Klein's. Second. 
Thank you, Jesse. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. We only got three. So, is this is okay. Uh, all in favor? Any discussion? Any on discussion that? on that before we go? All in favor? All right. No discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Opposed? Abstain? Nope. So carries. All right. Number three. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if it was specified how that money is to be allocated um, between police and fire, or if it's left left to the discretion of uh, the board of selectmen, town manager, or who. And of course, I'd also like to I'd also like to say that this is a very generous gift. And Absolutely, of course. Um, um, just uh, give give our appreciation for that as well. Yeah. Through the chair, each department will be receiving $60,000. Oh. And each department, uh, I think, in fact, all town departments have set up uh, gift accounts. OK. Yeah. Excellent. So the chair will entertain a motion to so, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. Just sorry. to be clear, Mr. Kamal, so the estate of Helen O'Brien, uh, who was a wonderful Hopkinton resident for mm -hmm. so many years, uh, is gifting to the community $60,000 to both the police and fire department each to be used for purchasing additional new equipment or whatever it is that the, the chiefs. Does that money get rolled into the department's budget then for a fiscal year or is a, diff, a gift account a separate? Gift entity? account is separate. Okay. So I'm fine with this. I think it's incredibly generous of the estate. And uh, I, I miss Helen. I used to snow plow her driveway, shovel her driveway every now and then when she was down right on West Main Street yep. trying to dig out. Uh, so anyway. Um, and those accounts script. are managed by the chiefs? Yes, in coordination with the finance department. Okay. Yeah. So I move that the town accept the, the, the $60,000 gifts for both the police and fire department to purchase new equipment. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Carries. All right. So the next item on the agenda is the HCA request for extension of hours for the New Year's Eve event. I think I have a paper on this. So, okay. So call Kelly Grill. Hello. Hi, Kelly. How are you? Good. Yeah, how are you? Good. Thanks for coming up. Hi, Kelly. Hi. So why don't we start by, um, should I read this? I can explain it. If you yes. Want to explain it. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have uh, yeah. a okay. proposal to host a New Year's Eve party at the HCA. It happens to fall on a Sunday this year. Um, and so our normal uh, hours on a Sunday um, are to end uh, alcohol service at um, 9 and the event by 9.30. And so for obvious reasons, we'd like to extend that to 12.30 with the end of alcohol service and 1 o'clock the end of the event. Um, it's going to be um, just a party. It's not a fundraiser. It's not a. It's just a party, and uh, we'll have a band and food and alcohol. And, and it was a way that we thought for people in the community to celebrate, and not have to go into Boston and to be right here in our community. It's also a good way to have people from Boston come out and experience That's right. Hopkins. That's right, because it'll be a great party. That's it. Always <laughs> is. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so with this. With your event that you're proposing, it's it's one of the events with alcohol, so you have all your your staff is TIP certified and insurance right. is covered right. and all that stuff. Exactly, we would use. Um, there's now in the state, which is which is great for us. There's actually four companies that carry the ABCC license that you are looking for. We would have, um, you know, their TIP certified staff. We would have um, a detail uh, that night, and we also are prepared to have a list of. Um, Ubers and cabs and things for people if they want to do that. We're looking also into um, talking to local um, limousine companies to see if they might want to, you know, be part of the event or something. Sounds great. Some uh, those horse-drawn carriages mm -hmm. would be nice too. So the <coughs> the event is on Sunday the thirty-first, mm -hmm. with Monday being a legal holiday then, January one. Oh, so it's a legal holiday for everybody, unless there's somebody who's in a separate kind of employment situation. Um, and we talked about, you know, having extended hours be something that would come mm -hmm. for us. So I think that's aligned with what we talked about when we did the lease, right? Yeah, correct. Um, 
So as long as all the other rules are followed, uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing New Year's Eve yet, but uh, I think it's a great idea. So I'm all in. You'd be gone by 9 o'clock anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. Uh, never mind. <laughs> 8 o'clock, it seems, for whatever reason these days. So, Mr. Kamala, everything looks good on this for the town, from the town's point of view? Yes, through the chair, we did circulate the request to the town review department. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, uh, the police chief, the fire chief, uh, and the permitting office um, provide their comments, and at this point, we did not receive any adverse comments. Good. So um, you mentioned that now this this is not a private <coughs> function; it's something oh. that that HCA is putting out now. Yes. Yes. Um, and but you said that it's not a fundraiser and. Don't get me wrong, I don't have any issue with it. Yeah. But I'm just wondering, I mean, I'm assuming you're not going to lose money on it. <laughs> well, no, hopefully not. So, <laughs> so, not. so what distinguishes this from a fundraiser? So um, the ticket price will be based on um, the, the f there'll be food provided, mm -hmm. the, uh, a band, uh, and the event. So it'll be like $40 versus $125. Right. So, so ballpark. Not, yeah, uh, it's, not a, okay. it's not extra you know, raising funds. Right. Okay. No raffles, none of that. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Kamalo, is uh, just from a legal standpoint, is there any requirement to have any kind of a public hearing, like a posted public hearing, uh, because we're altering liquor license terms or anything like that? No, because no, we be stated sweet. that we would come back for mm -hmm. yes. extended hours. Okay. Yeah. Right. Just want to make sure. I think it's a part of a <coughs> legal document that exists. Right. That's my understanding. Um, and also, the requested hours are within the alcohol policy hours that the board approved. Okay, good. Yes. Perfect. Good. good. That's big. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so if there's nothing more to talk about. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the request from the HCA to extend their hours uh, for the, the gathering on December 31st. Uh, to go through uh, serving alcohol 12 through 12:30 a.m. and the event to end at 1 a.m. on Monday, January 1st, 2018. I second Mr. Hur's motion. Okay, so we're ready for a vote. Uh, all of, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? And it carries. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I Thank hope you. See you, see you later. So our next item on tap uh, is the 110 Grill. LS Hopkin and LLC, change of manager for general on-premises all alcohol restaurant. Uh, so we are looking at the change of manager at the 110 Grill uh, requested by Kevin Erickson. Uh, we are changing from Michael Spots, who's the current manager, to Gene Ryan Jr., who's being requested due to the current manager being promoted to a new location. And Mr. Ryan is TIP certified. Uh, actually, no, Mr. Ryan will be TIP certified tomorrow. tomorrow. Um, so, all right, Mr. Erickson, is that you? Mr. Ryan. Mr. Ryan, welcome aboard. So, um, Mr. Kamala, why don't you guide us through this one? Yes, um, this issue, in fact, was on the agenda um, at your last meeting yep. on the 26th. At that point, we realized that um, the applicant was not present. Uh, in terms of process, um, we do require that individuals who are applying uh, to be new managers in town, that they give you both the opportunity to meet with them directly. Uh, and also, we, we, we circulate the request to the town's review departments, including the police department. Um, and at this point, I don't believe we received any adverse comments. Uh, I did speak directly with Chief Lee, and he did not have any concerns. Okay. So any discussion on the board? Uh, you want me to go first? Yes, please do. So, uh, welcome. Thanks for coming in tonight. Uh, I'm in there all the time, uh, so I don't have a financial interest in this. I have a food interest in this. Um, I don't think I've ever, actually, that's true. I have had a couple beers here over the, over the months it's been open. Um, I think it's a great restaurant. I know Robert Walker personally. Uh, he and I did business 30 years ago together. Uh, he was an electrical contractor at the time. I think he still might have one going. I'm not, he's got a lot going on. Oh, he's got uh, a lot going on. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's a driver, that's for sure. Um, I don't have a problem with this at all. Uh, you know, 
and I'm sure you have heard this about Hopkinton and the board and, and sort of all the various players in town. We take the licensing of these establishments very seriously. And uh, we've had some situations here in the last couple of years where we've suspended licenses and we've done all those things uh, that we have the authority to do when people make mistakes. Good people make bad decisions sometimes and then you know there's situations that arise as a result of all that. Um, and I don't know of any at 110 Grill to date. Uh, since it's been opened, and it sounds like Chief Lee and his comments back probably confirm that. Um, but we just want you to understand that you know it's a great restaurant. It's, there's a great crowd in there all the time, and uh, we want it to thrive like we want all our establishments to thrive. But please make sure everybody's playing by the rules. So when I'm in there and I'm enjoying my tuna melt, which I really like a lot, yeah. uh, I am looking around. Okay, that's part of my job is I'm out in the community and I do look around and I go to all the other places in town too and I try to spread out kind of where I go and I go to enjoy myself but I go to do my job too. And I'm not uh, carrying a badge or a gun or anything like that but I do carry a set of eyes and I look around and I report back to my colleagues when I see something that makes me a little nervous. I have not had that at all at 110 Grill but please know that we enjoy the tuna melt and we're going to be watching. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you. Start anything? Um, so this is a little bit of a homecoming for you, huh? Coming back to the area? Yeah, well, I managed the, uh, I was the general manager at TGI Fridays up the road for a long time, and uh, the 110 Grill interested me, so here I am. Okay, from the application, I was under the impression that you were in Dallas, not just TGI Oh, no, Fridays, that was my home office. Dallas. That was the home office. Okay, okay. So um, so you've got, you've got a, a fair number of years' experience working in the environment. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, you know what's right, what's wrong. Yeah. Uh, to Mr. Hur's point, you know, we, we look at these things pretty closely. Um, in the last, you know, Hopkinton has a pretty clean record in general, um, and uh, you know, in the last couple of years, there have been a couple of things that we've had to have some discussions about, some discussions that we don't like to have, but um, you know, that that kind of makes our ears perk up even more. Yeah. Kind of be looking to make sure. Everything's good. Mm -hmm. but, you know, we know that uh, the business community in general, you know, it's it's yeah. uh, a good community that uh, that wants to be a, a positive influence in Hopkinton. We trust that it's the same uh, with with you. Oh yes. At one ten. So, uh, you know, we're looking forward to continuing the relationship. So. Mr. Ryan, do you do you live locally? I live in Millbury. Millbury. All right, so if I don't hear any more. Did you grow up in Melbourne here? No, I moved out this way um, probably 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I was a Munson boy. You know where Munson is? Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I was do. a Munson boy. There's a restaurant <laughs> out there I went to when I just hit 21 a couple of times. There's not many <laughs> restaurants out there. So it's Northwest, right? Really Northwest, Northwest Mass? Yeah. No, it's uh, <laughs> near the Connecticut border outside of Palmer and Brimfield. I don't even know if I they know, serve okay. I know that restaurant. That restaurant. <laughs> I've heard of it. Something about lights, interesting <laughs> lanterns. I think Ted. <laughs> All right. Serious. So, uh, before I incriminate myself any further, um, <coughs> so I guess uh, I will call a vote. All in favor of the. We need uh, a motion, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry, we need a motion before I. I like how you're trying to move things along. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The last Mr. Chair, I, I move that the board vote to approve the change in manager application uh, for 110 Grill. Uh, changing from uh, Michael Spots, the current manager, to Gene A. Ryan Jr. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Mr. Chair, yes. uh, pending a, com a successful completion of the TIP certification. Yes. Yep. Is that in your motion, mm -hmm. Mr. Sestari? I'll accept that as a friendly amendment. And so that's in my second as well. Okay. So we've got to make sure that TIP certification gets done and we get documentation to that effect. Yep. Can you need to submit that to who would you submit that to? Maria and the chief. Maria. To Maria and the chief, okay. <coughs> okay. Maria's in the town manager's office. Or you can just give it to Mr. Westerling if he's hanging around. I'll give it to Mr. Hur next time he gets a tuna melt. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. <laughs> all right, so we're ready for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll oppose. <clears throat> Abstain. Carries. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Mr. You Ryan. Thanks. See you later. All right.
So the International Marathon Centre, I don't see Mr. Kilduff here. It's off the agenda. It's off the agenda, so yep. that's why Mr. Kilduff is not here. So Scratch. So it makes you wonder why it's still on the agenda. So is there a reason for the scratch, Mr. Kamal? Uh, Mr. Kilduff requested uh, an extension of time to prepare for the conversation with the board. Okay. All right, so the next item up is the Golden State Warriors action item. Uh, the Board of Selectmen will discuss inviting the Golden State Warriors to Hopkinton to celebrate their 2001, 2017 NBA championship. Uh, Mr. Sestari. So, Mr. Chair, I know that this <coughs> seems like a little bit of an odd item, uh, agenda item, and it, it, it may sound a little bit funny on the surface. Um, but <coughs> let, me, let me go into this Please do. a little bit. Um, so, it's been it's been a tradition uh, for the major athletic uh, leagues, as well as uh, the major championships in the NCAA uh, since the mid '80s. Uh, in fact, I think it was during the Reagan administration that the champions of each of these leagues uh, would get an opportunity to have a celebration that wasn't in their locale. So, you know. Uh, it's a Los Angeles team, it's outside of Los Angeles, and it's a Boston team, it's outside of Boston. Mm -hmm. And really give the nation an opportunity to recognize a championship and, and have a bit of a celebration. Um, this year, that's not happening with the Golden State Warriors. And I look at the tie that Hopkinton has to the NBA with Walter Brown being one of the founders of the Boston Celtics. <coughs> um, and being involved to the point where it's actually the trophy, the championship trophy was named after him for 20 years, uh, 1964 to 1984. And so I see Hopkinton's tie to the NBA and I think it would be fitting for Hopkinton to reach out and offer that same stage uh, while it may not be Washington DC, but offering a celebration outside of uh, outside of um, uh, you know, their hometown area so that uh, the nation can, can see the team, uh, they can uh, acknowledge it, they can celebrate. Um, I think it would be a good idea for the Golden State Warriors, I think it's a good idea for Hopkinton, and again, it's just something that would bring this to more of a national spotlight. And I do want to be clear on one thing. When tip-off happens, I'm a Celtics fan through and through. There's no question about that. Uh, but this, this isn't related to who I, who I root for. Okay. Mr. Hurt? So this is a very interesting um, agenda item. Uh, I haven't seen one like it uh, in my years, but uh, I think a very um, notable one at the same time. There's been... Um, you know, a pattern, as Mr. Sestari mentions, or a, a history um, of these types of celebrations in the United States taking place in Washington, D.C. And for whatever reason, uh, obvious to some, perhaps not obvious to others, uh, what goes on in Washington, D.C. these days um, is precluding a lot of things from happening that otherwise might. And I find that to be very unfortunate and very frustrating. I would love to meet Stephen Curry. Steph Curry. Steph Curry. Uh, I would love to meet uh, these folks and laud them for their championship last year. Uh, it's unfortunate that the entire nation on that stage, I mean, we have a stage here. We, could, you know, we do have a big stage once a year. and The world comes and hangs out for, for a weekend with us. Uh, but the stage here in Hopkinton is different than the stage in Washington, D.C. So. I'm not sure if we can, quote, compete with that, but uh, if, if they'd be willing to come by and uh, thank a governmental body somewhere uh, for inviting them to come and, and celebrate their victory, even though I'm a big Celtics fan as well, uh, I, I'd love to do it because I think it would be a unique opportunity for the town and perhaps we could help others understand that we have to get past some individual differences in our country and still try and move forward in a positive manner, which unfortunately is not happening. So uh, I'd love to give it a shot. Uh, I'm, I'm not uh, convinced at this point that they jump all over it because they're busy people, but uh, 
Uh, I think, if nothing else, the gesture is a positive, reasonable action, and perhaps uh, others could watch and learn at the same time. Okay. So when I first heard it, <clears throat> um, I've been around hockey for a long time, professionally, minor league, high school, college, youth, pond. And one of the spiels, one of the shticks, I guess you'd call it, uh, when I was playing hockey is there was a team in Indianapolis <coughs> who invited Manute Bowl, who was about a 10 foot tall basketball player, to play a, a, bas a hockey game. So he signed a contract with them. And so happened to be against the team I was playing for. So I was pretty fired up that I was going to be able to go out and showcase my skills to the world uh, against the 10-foot tall guy that probably was equally Was it a one-game contract <laughs> it, or was it a contract contract? It was, it was a contract. <clears throat> if I remember him, he was incredibly thin, too. He like was that. incredibly thin, and it wound up not going. His health... I think the his health put a lot of pressure on his <laughs> his, his health, it, it precluded him. His health precluded him. So yeah. it never happened. But <clears throat> what it did is it put that team, the Indianapolis Ice, prominently in the national media, which boosted ticket sales and it was a it was a it was a gesture it was a gimmick uh, when I first heard this that's what I thought it was going to be it was a, it's a gimmick and it's a it's a you know a slight to Trump or a slight to this person a slight to that person I wasn't too interested in, in getting involved but the more I looked into it and for the exact same reasons that Mr. Sestari said about the history of Hopkinton and the Browns and that the you know that the trophy I mean, I'm not a basketball fan. I'm not a Celtic fan. I don't like any type of basketball. But the fact that if we could get Hopkinton prominently in the news in a positive light, in a political sense, where the country right now is a, a mess politically. So if we could do it politically, or not politically, if we could just put Hopkinton in, in a positive light and get these guys here to do that, I think that would be great. I don't think it's a gimmick. I don't think it's a, a shtick. Um, if they'd be interested in coming up, you guys can get their autographs. I'm not up for autographs. I'd like to see if they have any size 15 shoes laying around that I could take for free. But um, you know, maybe they'd want my autograph. I not if know. they're valued over but $35. You can't do that. That's right. <laughs> Each or collectively? Each shoe. So, um, so that's my, my uh, thoughts on it is as long as we're not doing it, as long as we're not throwing this out there to say, you know what, some people don't like Trump. Some people do like Trump, some people don't like Trump. Um, as long as we're not doing it to say, you know, to kind of like slap our president in the face, I'm fine with it. Um, and again, the, 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 uh, the motion behind it is to put Hopkins in a positive light, and there is, there is some direct history to it, and for that reason, for the history of it, and for the, to put the town of Hopkins in, in a positive light, I'm for it. Mm -hmm. So through the chair, uh, Mr. Kamalo, I, you know, I would imagine this, this isn't something where you know, we just invite them to town hall and give them the key to the town and say, hey, thanks a lot for stopping by. Um, I guess what I'm envisioning is that there would be some type of a, a reception or a dinner or something like that. I would also be, you know, I would think we would try to coordinate something. Typically, they do some volunteerism, uh, you know, so maybe with uh, Children's Hospital in Boston or something like that. Um, but, you know, I guess to, to get things rolling, there would be some type of funds that are required. Is that something that uh, we would be able to look into from the town side? Or is it something where we would be able to take contributions from private businesses, or something where we set up, you know, if we're having a, you know, a reception, where people are purchasing tickets for the reception and that's covering uh, whatever cost? I'm trying to figure out what are we capable of doing legally. I, again, I think as was said earlier, this is this is a new concept. Uh, it's a very interesting and exciting opportunity. I think my recommendation to the board is to first of all find out if there are any private entities in town that may be willing to actually take responsibility for organizing this event. 
um, in, in that regard. Therefore, we can um, find out if there are any private institutions that will pay for it, uh, or two, private institutions that can coordinate the fundraising effort. Um, I think that that would be the, the first option. Mm -hmm. I think we, using town resources should be the last resort. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I'd want to make sure that we didn't have taxpayer dollars. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. Um, but I, I, I suspect there may be some private entities that would be interested in helping to organize and uh, perhaps fund certain aspects of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much funding we really need uh, to make it happen. I mean, I'm assuming this would happen if it were to happen at all. <coughs> a trip to Boston while they're going to play here. Right, and then we get a couple hours to pull them aside, do right. something along those lines. Um, so, you know, and they're and they're playing in Boston on November sixteenth. I think the game prior to that is November thirteenth. So I would think that we would try to get that window when they have a couple of days off and try to take advantage of, like you say, a couple of hours of their time. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. So I guess we are ready for a motion. Is that correct? Do we need a motion on this? We would need yeah. a motion on it, sir. Yeah. Okay. So the chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to uh, approve the action of inviting the Golden State Warriors uh, to Hopkinton to celebrate their 2017 NBA championship. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? So, Mr. Chair, I would want to make sure uh, that we do this in in a positive light and with a positive perspective only. Yes. I would not want this to turn into a circus act, yep. mm -hmm. and I wouldn't support it if it does turn into a circus act. Um, I'm all about moving forward in a positive manner in life, whether it's here, Massachusetts, Washington, D.C., on the basketball court, on a football field, whatever. Um, and I just want to make sure that if we undertake this, we do it uh, with positive intentions we stay out of the fray if any fray yeah. surfaces, and we try to celebrate some great athletes doing some great things and have a nice afternoon and move on with our lives. Yeah, Absolutely. I like that idea too. And it's not about Republicans and Democrats and, and rights and lefts and things like that. It's about Hopkinton and Hopkinton only. So um, I, I definitely um, back you up on that. And if it does, if it does turn into a, a political uh, sandstorm, uh, then I would no longer back it up. I would, I would change my thought process. So, okay. So that said, uh, we're ready for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain, and it carries. All right. So the next item on the agenda is the DPW consultants, Mr. Westerling. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. I haven't seen you for a while. Want to join us at the table? Sure. With the permission of the chair? Sure. Yeah, that's all yeah. right. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Good evening. Yeah, there's room when there's only three people on here. <laughs> I think Brendan's getting used to this idea of Mr. <laughs> chair. He likes to be addressed as Mr. Chair. So. I don't, I don't know, know about that. Think. i got to be honest with you. I'm selling the sizzle, not the steak. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer to be able to sit back and pass notes. I'm seeing a little coup in the making here. <laughs> no, not from this cat. <laughs> Somebody's disappeared and somebody else is sliding right yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, sorry to see you go. <laughs> All right, Mr. Through, Westerling. Yes, through, through the chair. Um, there are two items that John is here for. Um, one, discussing the process that the town employs in identifying consultants that we work with. And we also want to use that opportunity to receive feedback on if there are any opportunities we, um, to improve the process. Uh, or any feedback based, based on lessons learned, what are the things that we have seen happen in the past. So basically, the process is uh, done in the context of the 30B law. That is the law that um, defines the procurement process uh, for supplies and services. And in this case, uh, what we normally do is we put out an RFP it identifies the scope of work, it identifies the expected output, and we also request that the consultants 
uh, identify how they will approach their work, how they will interact with town boards, and the process also requires them to identify references, people who have worked with them in the past. And it so happens that here in Massachusetts, uh, specifically <coughs> with regard to the work that we do at DPW, I'm, 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 I'm talking specifically about the, the process that we have employed in developing the, the water and sewer rate studies. Mm -hmm. uh, here in, in Massachusetts, there, there are very few companies that do that work. Uh, the town in the past has relied on the Abrahams Group, uh, and in fact, the last time we sent the RFP, which was um, late last year, early this year, uh, we, we, I called around other town managers uh, to find out if they use other companies. John Westerling reached out to other DPW directors uh, to see who they've used. Um, we were able to make contact with at least three firms, the Abrahams Group, there was one group that also in fact responded, and there's a third group that we contacted and they simply told us that they didn't have the time to do the work. So at the end of the day, we sent out the RFP, we received two proposals, and the decision became very easy for us because on the one hand, one group was going to do it for $20,000, the other group was going to do it for forty thousand dollars, and we would pay the procurement laws. We went with the lowest bid. Um, again, the Abrahams Group is a group that we've worked with uh, uh, for, in fact, all my years I've been here. Um, they are familiar with the town process. They have developed a, a workbook that basically requires us to provide some of the information and therefore from the from the staff perspective we also are familiar with their demands and what that the, what what that may mean for 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 our workload what we have also learned is that as we dig deeper into the results of the most recent water and sewer rate studies we strongly believe that more work needs to be done. Uh, and, and here's what we've, I've asked John uh, and the finance team to look into. Receiving the information on the finances of the water and soil enterprise is a good step, but it's not sufficient for helping us better understand how those businesses operate. And therefore, I have asked John to look into the opportunity of developing a business plan. Um, and a business plan will address the economic, econometric component, uh, the financial component, the operational component, if there are any opportunities to improve workflow, and last but not least, customer service. What do we understand about customers? What can we do to make sure that uh, we meet our customers' expectations. And so what I anticipate is there for, for the next RFP that will go beyond simply getting the water and sewer rate uh, financial information uh, to include the, compo the, co the other components that I mentioned. Um, we will send out an RFP, we will look at the responses, evaluate who is the most responsive and advantageous to the committee and, and, and take it from there. So this, the process is laid out specifically f through uh, chapter 30B uh, in terms of how we procure the service and we'll take any questions from the board. And again, I think my message is there is a law that prescribes how this is done. We follow that law to the best of our abilities. And most importantly, this group has over the years developed and um, developed and also identified lessons and opportunities in terms of how we can improve this process. From the staffing side, our feedback is one piece that we need to improve is to then tell the business story. And I did lay out how we'll do that. We're interested in hearing from the board in terms of how else we can, we can improve the process. Yeah, I'll start. And, you know, first of all, I want to I want to say that uh, when I when I asked the question and you know wanted this on the agenda, 
certainly, uh, you know, I had the Abrahams group in mind, you know, when it came into my head. But it's it's looking at more than that, just them. Mm -hmm. and, and this is nothing against them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I know that they've been doing some good work for the town for a number of years. And, you know, I don't have any issue if they continue to be our contractor of choice in that area. Um, one of your comments, Mr. Kamal, about following 30B regulations. Um, you know, I, I believe we are following them. Uh, you know, I know that there are strict standards, you know, when you issue RFPs, but it doesn't always have to come down to the price being the only component. Uh, we can also put other, we can put other components in there, requirements within the RFP. We can grade different areas with different weights and then say, okay, whoever has the best grade overall, which, you know, is comprised of, you know, the quality of your answer for this, this, and this, and the price, but oh, by the way, price is only worth 40% of, you know, the overall score, whatever. <coughs> you understand what I'm saying. So we don't have to be, you know, quite so, you know, straightforward with that if, if we don't want. Is it worth getting into complexities for a $20,000 contract? You know, that's, you know, that's <coughs> another question, so. Anyway, now moving on to, you know, the, the issue. Um, so I think that, you know, this, the reason this may have come up is possibly um, there's become a stagnancy, not in any one party's uh, part, but several parties, you know, maybe partially the Abrahams group, it may be partially, you know, the, the town employees, you know, and I'm looking at you too because it's you too, mm -hmm. and also the board. Um, I've been on the board now for coming up on nine years, and this is one of the conversations each year that I dread seeing on the agenda because it just puts me to sleep. <laughs> and I remember this year thinking to myself, oh, water rates again. You know, I mean, it, it, it just, it, there's, no, there's no real interest in it for me other than trying to make sure that they don't get out of whack. And this year I started really, you know, looking, you know, and listening to the conversation and realizing that the information we were getting was so incredibly static. Um, so we're trying to make a decision on whether we should raise rates 0%, 1%, 2%, and we see its effect over the next five years, assuming that we raise at the same percentage each of those next five years, and what effect that has on you know, the, the cash within the enterprise. But that's not how we do things. You know, I mean, as, as you know, we look at water rates every year. And each year we're deciding whether it's gonna be zero, one, or two, or maybe negative one or negative two. So for us to, to look at it in that static sense, it's not really getting us a good picture. And I don't think it's a lot of, of, of extra work for you know, the consultant to give us the different scenarios. The other thing I noticed this year, though, is that uh, when, you know, when, when we're looking to try to maintain that amount of cash on hand or target amount, you know, I think each of the last two or three years we've asked how do we come up with this, and it's always a percentage of our operating expenses and all of that. And so this year when we're looking, I think it was on the water side, at our surplus being somewhere in the air, you know, and my numbers may be off by, you know, some big multiple, but, you know, when, when we're looking at uh, um, our, our surplus being at, what was it, you know, 50 or 60%, you know, of, of our operating expenses, and we're told that our target should be between 10 and 25% in case something happens, and then it's still being recommended that we increase rates. I can't figure that out for the life of me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and then we're told, you know, okay, well, yeah, that 25% would be good if there's one, you know, catastrophic, you know, mechanical issue or, you know, something that needs to be replaced. But if two happened, it's not going to be enough. Well, then why are you recommending 10 to 25% if you're really saying we should be budgeting for you know, two of these such incidents, which might put us at 40 to 50%? So, so not everything lines up with me. And I don't, want, I don't want this to be an area that just ends up being, 
one of those standard conversations and yep we get to raise rates another one or two percent and we're going to make sure that we got a good little kitty over here of taxpayer money just in case something happens or in case we want to take on a new project that's what i'm trying to protect from and i just want all of us to be thinking of that and if it comes down to uh, being more specific in the rfp where we say look we're not looking for a static computation over the next five years we want this to be more dynamic we've given you what our uh, planned capital projects are over the next five years now use that and figure out how we can hover as close to 20% or 25% whatever the number is as we can and we want to see your projection over the next five years what it should be whether it should be 1% this year 2% the following year and then minus 1% let's not have today's taxpayers paying for tomorrow's water users and that's let's not have today's water users paying for yesterday's water u water users as best we can. Yeah. I, I don't I know think if there was a question there. Just it, a rant. I think it needs to be acknowledged that this this is a good point. Um, it's it's an it's an issue of concern uh, mm -hmm. to us. Um, John and I are currently speaking with um, uh, some some individuals who who do this kind of work uh, for communities and also for the private sector. Uh, and so far, the discussion um, has been very encouraging. And I think part of why this topic is of interest to us and carries some level of agency is the fact that whilst we may see some high percentage um, retained earnings in the two enterprises that's not going to be for long um, if you really dig deeper into the numbers uh, the future of the two enterprises is not encouraging uh, and I think that's why, from an, something in, in, that's why, in the back of my mind, I'm, I'm saying we may actually need an independent, fresh set of eyes looking at these numbers just to make sure that the town does not, does not run into some serious issues uh, with regard to the two enterprises. So the, the, the timing of the discussion, I think, is, 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 is spot on. Uh, it's, it's a topic that we need to treat with some level of agency uh, and, and I think getting some fresh set of eyes to look at our data may be the way to go. And granted, I think you pointed also with regard to how we structure the RFP is well taken. Uh, we may need to be more precise in terms of how we define our expected outcomes and, and, and realizing the point that you made, i.e., we're not looking for static data. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a business operation. We want to make sure that it's sustainable. We want to make sure that it will continue to serve the residents of the town well, uh, well into the future. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. And again, it, you know, I know that I know the data, the data points that I'm bringing up are specific to one contractor that we're using, but you know, I'm not trying to pick on them. I want us to be looking at this kind of thing for everybody who is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Hurt? So why do we have to have this pool of money sitting to the side for potential future projects? Why aren't we more like, you know, a typical capital asset process that we go through a town meeting where we say, okay, we're going to buy that $300,000 item and, and we tax for that year. And, and when it's done, we, you know, that tax is over. It's almost like, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're saying, we're gonna put a million dollars over here, whatever the number is, because we're gonna do some projects that no one's agreed to yet. So we're taxing before we have a need. Now I understand a need for emergency repairs, and we need to have a, a mount based on the size of the systems and things along those lines. But I don't understand the need why we get ahead of ourselves with taxation, it's taxes to me, I, yeah, it's, users fees but still it's a governmental body taking money so my simple mind taxation right <coughs> why are we taking cash and putting it in the bank if we don't have an approved project to spend it on in fact the answer to your question Mr. Hay, is that uh, to be clear 
I think there are three components to the answer. The first being that I think in the last three or four years, we've been dipping into the reserves to pay for the operating budget. So beyond reserving money for the future, we're already dipping into those reserves to balance the budget. That's, that's one piece. The second piece yeah, well, is... we need to fix that. That's, that's why I think we, we <laughs> absolutely need somebody to come, take, to, some, to come and take a good look at these numbers. The, the second piece is that we recently completed the capital plan for um, the water system in town. We are almost finalizing uh, or nearing completion of the <coughs> Uh, the sewer side plan, um, the sewer side, not suicide, <laughs> sewer, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, and I think that's where we're saying, armed with those two plans, what is the message that we give back to the community relative to our infrastructure needs, immediate and in the future? And also, based on whatever those plans identify, what's the best business approach to fund those plans. Uh, thus, this might help us answer the question that Mr. Sestari raised. If we're going to continue building on the reserve, what is the rationale behind that reserve? Now there will be some projects that are clearly identified to that. Granted, given the fact that our capital planning process and approval is on a year-by-year -year basis, we will not make the assumption that all those projects are going to be funded. But we will alert the community that should these projects be funded, this is how, what it will cost the town. Uh, and then, and then the, 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 the third component, the third component is emergencies. Uh, that's the answer to you, the third component to, that's the third component to the answer to your question. We need to be ready for emergencies. Uh, we have an old system um, I think one of the most, the, one of the recent projects was replacing a, um, a line that was over 100 years old. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it, it, there are three, three, three aspects to, to the conversation. Well, I would we're already agree. using, yeah, we're already using the money to pay the operating budget. We will complete an op a, a capital plan for both water and sewer that will be tied to the business plan and therefore will be the basis for defining whatever reserves are needed. And then thirdly, we need to be ready for emergencies. Yeah. I, I agree yeah. on the emergency preparedness piece, mm -hmm. and I agree on not using uh, <coughs> supposed capital asset funds, future funds for operating budgets mm -hmm. in current or future next year fiscal years. So we should address those things. Um, but I'd rather see you know the water bill go from two hundred forty dollars to two hundred forty six dollars or two hundred fifty six dollars, some big jump when we know we need it than to always be taking it year after year after year, but talking about one and two percent. I mean, we're talk we don't wanna have big spikes, but a spike in this bill is not, is not um, you know, $10,000, a spike could be $38 a year. So again, I'd rather just have us a little closer to need and a little less uh, squirreling away money, but it sounds like we got a couple of other things we have to fix first. And, and, and to your point, you know, that's, that's something that I was kind of trying to verbalize before, is when we have these projects, um, it's not, in my mind, it's not appropriate for the people who bought water last year to be funding a project that's gonna be benefiting the people who buy water next year. Um, so, you know, if I'm, if I'm paying to the, to the water system, I wanna be paying for the expenses today and the things I'm benefiting from. I don't want to, you know, if I move out of town next month, I don't want to be thinking that I paid toward something that happens three years from now, because I'm not benefiting from that, and and I think that that's what we have to think of for the for the ratepayers. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that you touched on the emergency <coughs> aspect of it. One of the things that concerns me, and I'll be specific, and I don't have a whole lot of um, facts to go along with it, but so the water the water line on Route 85 let's say from the high school to the Milford line. That's pretty old, I'm assuming. If that lets go, 
if part of that goes, I have a hard time thinking. I'm, now, I'm just assuming that there's been a, a hundreds of years, or a hundred years anyways, of sediment and silt falling on that pipe. So that eight inch pipe or six inch pipe, whatever it was, is probably down to a three or four inch pipe. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> once that breaks, if you replace it piecemeal, you're gonna, you're gonna have to keep replacing it piecemeal. And you're always gonna have a substandard um, water line. So if, and I, I don't have a problem with us having, you know, some kitties saved up to replace that. So when we do have to replace that water line, that water main, uh, you know, be it what two thousand feet or however long it is, that our water bill isn't going to go from, like you said, two hundred and forty dollars to six hundred dollars, because I think there are a lot of people in town that have been in town for a long time that don't have the pockets or the earning ability to cover that big jump. And I understand what you're saying about you don't want to pay today for if you move out of town uh, for something that's going to happen, say, in three years or, or five years. Uh, for me, I'm happy to take people's money if they want to pay now and move out of town. I'd, I'd like them to not move out of town. I'd like everyone to stay in town. But in order for us to have, you know, we're building this this elementary school now, so these people can, in a few years, and can... We're taking, and we're taking a loan, yeah. and that's being paid off, not all at once, mm -hmm. but over a 20 to 30 year period. Mm -hmm. And so I guess all I'm suggesting is that we look at that angle too for some of these other projects. You know, maybe it's a loan that's taken out, yeah. and then, so that there's not some spike in rates, sure. but it's paid and, off. And I'm rate. perfectly fine with that. I'm just concerned over the people and the, the townspeople that don't have earning ability that have been here for a long time that would have to absorb that directly into their pocket and if, if it means that we go up six or seven bucks a year for these people on Davis Road or, or wherever they are the people that have lived here forever or even not lived here forever but are on a very very tight budget um, I'd hate to see them have to go to Upton or Milford or something like that and get their kids an education less than what they like, what they can get in Hopkinton, because we didn't charge them an extra six dollars a year for for water. So, um, so that said, on the emergency side, that's where I'm okay with the, you know, with maintaining a, a high coffer to take care of those emergencies. Um, and but I think that we that I got off track a little bit there. My concern on. Uh, on our consulting uh, companies that come in is that we not just get the best bang for our buck. So the fact that, that this company was $20,000 and the other company was $40,000, i am glad that they, that they were half the price, but I would expect them to do the same amount of work, if not more, than what that $40,000 bid came in. So as long if, if they're getting paid a lump sum to do the job for us, I would expect us to take everything we can do, put it in a wheelbarrow, bring it over to them, and say, "There you go for 20 grand. I want you to fix it, and I want it done in pretty Times New Roman and 10 font uh, in six weeks." So, I guess it's important for me. I don't have a problem with with having consultants. I do have a problem if they're not working to the best of their ability. I'm not implying that they're not. Uh, the uh, the presentation that they made has been great, and the, and the fact that they, two years in a row, spent some time with me and explained to me everything before we came to the meeting, it's great. It, it, it clarified a lot of things for me. Um, but I want to make sure that the consultants, these people, and every consultant that we have in the town, every subcontractor, every everyone that we have in the town, that the town gets the most value that we can. Um, I don't expect them to do $500,000 worth of work for $100,000. Uh, I would like it, but I don't expect them to. I would expect them to, to give us, you know, a, a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to have a system in place to hold their feet to the fire to, to assure that we're doing that. Mr. Chairman, may I follow up on your, your concern about that uh, Hayden Row water sure. pipe? We have, uh, over the past two years, mm -hmm. we identified the two worst sections of water main in town. One was on Cedar Street, mm -hmm. so on the northerly portion. 
of that intersection uh, and we've got the design funds available we've got some construction funds but not enough construction funds so we'll come back to replace that one is that at the route 85 135 intersection correct is that what you're saying? Okay. we need we also need to do that so that we've got that completed before the main yep. street is reconstructed yep. but we've also identified and uh, started the design for that section that you mentioned mm -hmm. not only is it old not only is it tuberculated but it's also starting to pose water quality problems for us so we've got the design funds in place and we will be mm -hmm. coming back to identify the, the the cost to replace that particular section of Maine that you mentioned okay well I don't believe I used the word tuberculated but that will now be incorporated <laughs> in my uh, vocabulary Very tuberculation good. so good well I'm uh, I have nothing else anything else mr. Starr yes to her not on that, but I think we have another item, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. and, and with, with the Chair's permission, we will now move on to discuss um, yeah, sure. what the Department of Public Work does for the community and the level of planning, mm -hmm. um, long-term, medium-term, and on a day-to-day -day basis that goes into the operations of the department. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Can I just ask how this agenda item came to be? I think it's a couple of points. Um, one, there was a specific request from Mr. Sestari. Um, <coughs> and then secondly, we're always... The we, second item or the first item? Yeah, the second, second item. The second, okay. yes. Yeah. Secondly, we're, we're also always looking for opportunities to report to the board, receive your feedback, and then most importantly, also tell our story to the residents. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Through the chair, uh, big picture, due to the generosity of the residents of Hopkinton, the DPW's average annual operating budget over the last three years has been approximately $9 million, which was dedicated to $4 million for the highway division, $2.9 million for the sewer division, and $2.2 .2 million for the water division. We have the unique privilege and opportunity to positively impact residents' lives on a daily basis by providing the physical assets, the management practices, the policies, and the personnel necessary to provide and sustain structures and services essential to the welfare and quality of life for this community. John, sorry, real quick. Yes. The number you mentioned, the numbers you mentioned at the beginning of your comments, those include enterprise funds, correct? That's Enterprise's correct. Revenue? Yes. yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the value added by that $9 million investment, day in and day out, is as follows. We maintain 110 miles of public roads and 53 miles of sidewalk by providing the necessary signage, traffic lights, and pavement management to ensure safe travel. Our pavement condition index for our roads has increased every year thanks to the annual pavement management plan and the thoughtful investment in that pavement structure. We also remove snow and ice to ensure safe commuting in the winter. Hopefully that won't be upon us for several months. Stop it. We, <laughs> we provide more than 1 million gallons of clean potable water on a daily basis for drinking, cooking, and commercial and industrial uses by operating and maintaining eight wells and water pump stations and 76 miles of water main. We collect and treat sewage to help protect the public health by operating and maintaining eight sewer pump stations, 40 miles of sewer pipe, and a sewer treatment facility. We manage the automated collection of cur curbside trash and recyclables from 4,500 residential properties and all town buildings, including the schools. We maintain six parks and fields, including the common, for the enjoyment of the public. We maintain seven public cemeteries and conduct burials in those cemeteries when required. We maintain the DPW fleet that has a total value of $4 million, and we perform many fleet maintenance jobs for the police and fire departments and we manage the maintenance of public shade trees in addition to that day-to-day -day work the DPW must address emergency work such as storms whether they be snow ice or wind water and sewer breaks etc the DPW also manages uh, must also manage its involvement in regular events such as the Boston Marathon and Family Day Finally, the DPW manages millions of dollars worth of capital projects, such as the construction of the $14 million DPW facility, into which we'll be moving in two months' time. What was the name of that facility? Uh, that is the Thomas McIntyre Town Barn. Very nice. Uh, the new $1 million water tank, 
the $1.5 million sidewalk program, the $1 million annual management pavement management plan, excuse me, and many other capital projects. So how does the DPW plan, implement, schedule, and evaluate the day-to-day short-term projects and the capital long-term projects? The director meets with the town manager, DPW managers, and other town staff to set priorities, address talent challenges, and assess the workload. From there, for the short-term projects, the DPW managers meet with their foreman and teams on a daily basis to understand the workload, to set priorities, and to schedule the work. That work can be affected daily or even hourly based on weather, emergencies, equipment breakdowns, and available personnel. The entire DPW team must be flexible and nimble in order to be able to address the needs of the community and its residents. Fortunately, the DPW team has those characteristics and we are dedicated to serving the needs of the community. For long-term projects, the DPW's planning relies on several resources, including, but not limited to, sewer projects rely on the comprehensive wastewater management plan, as well as state regulations. Water projects rely on the water supply and treatment evaluation report, as well as state regulations. And highway projects rely on the annual pavement management plan. The DPW also plans projects to support growth in the community, for example, water supply and infrastructure needs to serve a growing residential population and business community. To meet new regulations, for example, the Fruit Street Water Blending Facility to meet new manganese regulations for water. And to meet the needs of the community, for example, the Hayden Road Traffic Calming Project that had its roots in addressing a safety issue and we worked very closely with the community through public forums to gather the necessary input to hone our designs. Many of our long-term projects require the assistance of professional engineers and consultants, and those professionals develop design alternatives which are evaluated by town staff to select the best fit for the community. They may all assist, also assist us with bidding and construction management. We are in the process of ensuring that Hopkinton has a reliable water source through our negotiations of a new intermunicipal agreement with the town of Ashland. We are also evaluating the needs of the sewer system through our capacity analysis with which we can update our comprehensive wastewater management plan. We will also be creating a business plan, as was mentioned by the town manager, for both the water and the sewer enterprise funds to ensure their financial stability and the services they provide to the community. This is a tremendous amount of work to manage and to accomplish day in and day out. The workload and work accomplishments, pardon me, the workload and work accomplished has been tracked using simple spreadsheets. However, we recently implemented a software program so that we may improve our efficiency and our level of public service. That program will assist with monitoring the work, tracking requests for service, and understanding the workload so that we may better serve the needs of the public. That same software will be implemented to track vehicle maintenance, also previously done by hand, which will provide us better information on vehicle maintenance history and that will give us better information we, when we assess whether or not a vehicle needs replacement. We are also one of the first departments to utilize the C-Click Fix mobile application so residents can be, bring requests for service more easily to our attention. And finally, the DPW is in the midst of preparing a strategic plan which will lay out the vision over the next five years to support the growing needs of the community. We will bring that plan to the board when it is completed. So through you, Mr. Chairman, that is the big picture, and I uh, am prepared to take any questions or provide any further details. Okay, Let's start. Um, John, I don't want it to seem like I'm picking on you tonight because I'm not. I like having you in town. Thank you. I was on, I was on the committee that uh, that that chose someone else, but I chose you <laughs> from the start. And, Thank you. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll say in public that I'm glad we had the opportunity to bring you back, and mm -hmm. there's no regrets on my part. Whatsoever. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, so you do have my support. The entire DPW has my support. Thank the you. The reason I asked for this, I'm, I'm glad that you took that upfront opportunity to go through everything the DPW does because I think it is good for the people in town to hear it and you know really get a good understanding of all the things you do um, where my question was initiated was I just wanted to know how you organize it all you know and and in the end when you were talking about how you've kind of made a transition or in, currently in a transition I'm not sure how long ago it was 
uh, going from simple spreadsheets over to a system mm -hmm. where you can actually manage these projects, track time and things like that. That's what I was looking for in, in the answer. Um, you know, when I, when I go buy a project and, you know, I see, you know, however many people, uh, you know, working on a project and, you know, with X number of people from the DPW and X number of people from the police department there, you know, sometimes I think to myself, gee, I wonder how much that project is costing the taxpayers. Yeah. And I want to feel assured that if people do come and ask those types of questions, we're able to get the answers mm -hmm. with, you know, I'm not saying down to the penny, but, you know, with, with reasonable assurance. Uh, if, you know, Mr. Kamala or someone else comes into your office and says, hey, you know, what's Pete working on today? Uh, you know, I think that you should have an idea, you mm -hmm. know, where Pete is and what he's working on today. Mm -hmm. And now that we're moving into uh, a more state-of-the-art facility, um, you know, I think that I think that we should have those other you know state of the art means as well, so that we're we're bringing the whole department in. And that was one of the things where you know, if if we don't if we didn't have those means, then I want to make sure that you know we're pushing to get you uh, those means. So, thanks for the explanation, and I appreciate it. You're welcome, and thank you very much for the uh, continued vote of confidence. I I assure you through through the chair. Uh, we have far too much work on our hands, and the managers know that and the foremen know that. We've got far too much work to put more people on a project than are necessary, uh, especially if it's something like a, a paving project. There's a lot of people required there because bituminous concrete is uh, it's a perishable product. You've got to put it down. You've got to spread it. You've got to roll it before it gets cold. Otherwise, it's no good. Uh, and as far as police, uh, we, we rely on the police department to let us know based on the location how many police officers we need to ensure public safety for not only the motorists, the pedestrians, and also the DPW employees. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Herr. You mentioned um, that you have your team or your the managers and foremen have meetings in the morning or something. Can you describe that a little bit more detail mm -hmm. for me, please? Sure. On a, on a weekly basis, uh, and, and more frequently as necessary, I meet with the department managers, the highway foreman, the administrative manager, the water sewer foreman, to set out the workload in general for the week. Uh, they take that then to their team. So the highway manager will sit with his foreman and the rest of his team. Separately, the water manager, water sewer manager, will <coughs> meet with his team. They know what's required based on required uh, testing for water and sewer, for example, if they've got any breaks, uh, what the workload is for, for highway catch basin repairs. Based on those meetings, who they have available for equipment, uh, sorry, what they have available for equipment, who they have available for personnel, what the weather's like, they then prioritize the workload ahead of them. And they would prioritize that work based on needs of public safety, protecting private property, uh, and from there, they would lay out what the work is for each one of the individuals throughout the day. So the meetings are regular and steady throughout the year? They're, they're daily. Okay. And then how about the metrics that the department has to sort of measure, you know, the various, I mean, you laid out a ton of stuff. There's a ton that you guys do. Um, and I think it gets done extremely well. Thank but you. When, you, when you lay all that out and you, we dispatch folks and we have them do their various things, is there like a, a, a weekly or a monthly or quarterly meeting where we sit down and say, okay, this is what we've accomplished, this is what we were hoping to accomplish, we hit it here, 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 we missed it there because a storm came. I mean, what are the metrics that you use to manage the business? Excellent question. Through the chair, that's one of the things when I meet on that weekly basis with the, with the highway manager and the water sewer manager and the administrative manager, we review what the work was proposed for the week before, what was accomplished, uh, what we weren't able to accomplish, what things that we didn't expect, for example, whether it's a water break or a storm that took down a number of trees. So, so we have an understanding of the work that was accomplished, and we also have an understanding of the work that wasn't expected to be done but was also accomplished. And that's, what, uh, that's done by hand now through use of spreadsheets, but that's one of the things that this new software program will allow us to do. It will attract calls for service. As soon as a call comes in for any service from whether it be a resident or a contractor, it's entered into a system and that system then distributes that work, whether it's highway work or administrative work or water sewer work, administers it, delivers it to that manager 
and they then take it, prioritize it, and make sure that that's, that work is accomplished. So like the calls coming in, there's a metric right there. How many calls come in on a weekly, monthly, or quarterly basis, however you want to do it? How many roads, um, miles of road do we resurface on an annual basis, a metric? Uh, how many potholes are filled um, is a, could be a metric, you know? How many leaks we have to repair? I mean, it, it just, just tracking what's done mm -hmm. in a numerical fashion so that you can then measure it against prior weeks and months and quarters and years and then you can plan for future weeks and months and quarters and years so you know we kind of live in the metrics world and the in the business side of things um, and I, I think looking for what those metrics are what are the key metrics that, that, that can numerically quantify what's getting done um, and then presenting that to the citizens and then using that for future planning and budgeting and everything else Mm -hmm. uh, I think would be um, very helpful for all of us. Um, so it's something to consider. I, I personally, you know, kind of taking up a little bit from what Todd was saying a minute ago, um, Mr. <coughs> Westerling and I have had some pretty good healthy debates over the years. You know, I push back on a lot of things and he always stands in there with me probably more than anybody else. And I think to his credit, uh, because he makes concrete arguments why certain things need to be done and, and the way they need to be done. So I applauded DPW for all that's getting done. Thank you. Uh, I think it is coming to a new level now in terms of its uh, uh, facilities and the software you're talking about and some other things. So uh, as the community grows and as the community moves forward in a positive way, obviously a DPW is going to help us get there and, and keep us there. Um, so let's just keep working on ways to manage it in a way that most citizens in Hopkinton relate to, mm -hmm. and I think metrics is one of those key things that we all have to put up with at work, right? So we'd encourage uh, the DPW to put <coughs> some more metrics in place too. I appreciate you, you your okay feedback. With that, that concept. Yeah. 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 Specific metrics that we have to report on for the ICMA project. How about in the vehicles? Another quick thought, if I could, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. um, do we have GPS in the vehicles? Uh, through the chair, no, we do not. Should we consider doing that? Do we have GPS in the police vehicles and fire vehicles? No. I don't like that thought of GPS. I don't like that at all. Why? Why? I don't like the fact that you, that I think there needs to be a level of trust with the, with the employees and that, that's micromanaging too much. If you, if you lay out in the morning that you need to cut brush on School Street from School Street to West Main and you figure that's a good four people eight hours if uh, you know I don't think that you need to micromanage where they're going every second of the day I think that it's uh, I think it's a, a detriment to the morale and um, I wouldn't like it if it were me I, I would I would think that people are trying to track me and, and micromanage and try to catch you doing something wrong I don't think that our department our DPW and I'm speaking specifically to DPW I don't think that we stereotypically fall into the same um, um, mold that you know you have to learn how to lean on a shovel 30 different ways. I think that our, our DPW people work hard and um, I, think of my, I think of it as a worker. I, I actually did, I used to work on that when it was the highway department, I was an employee there. And um, just the fact that someone is wanting to walk, you know, it sounds like like it's a coming for me. It sounds like it's a like like I'm paranoid that, that people are trying to catch you, but it's not that at all. It's that I would assume that you do your job. If you don't do your job, you haven't done it, and I want to know why you haven't done it. And if it's because you've went to uh, you know you, you parked behind the pumping station, slept for six hours, and had a long lunch at Cornell's, well, then you're going to figure that out at the end of the day because your work isn't done. Um, so uh, just one guy saying that's why I don't like it I don't like the idea of it mm. so, so, so the reason I raised it uh, it's not for, with, with all due respect it's not for any of the reasons you just outlined there okay um, I'm glad I could open I'm a mind. big believer in fact my management <coughs> philosophy although I'm enjoying not being in the management role right now it's in business catch, catch someone doing a good job catch right? them doing something right that's yeah. correct so I'm not I don't believe in going to find people mm -hmm. doing something wrong mm -hmm. so that's not why I would ask if we have GPS in the vehicles I just think it's a technology, a modern technology that now is very inexpensive to deploy. 
and it helps you track assets and helps you become more efficient in the movement of those assets around the community, around the marketplace, whatever it is you do. So, I mean, in, in all the business interactions I have now, GPS is everywhere. You know, we use it to move around, but we also, to, to figure out where we're going, but we also use it to make sure that, okay, we've got two assets over here, and we have an emergency that just came up. We know exactly where they are. They can move over there and respond quicker. So I don't think it's a, uh, I don't view it as punitive in any way, shape, or form, and I wouldn't want it to be used in, in a punitive manner. But I do think in terms of efficiency, as we bring on this new facility, as we bring on these new bays for ma maintaining things, as we bring on this software to track things and schedule things, uh, the idea of GPS, in my view, just kind of goes along with that. Um, so I, we don't have to answer it tonight, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying it's something I think we should consider. And I understand those are gonna say, we're well, just trying to figure out where I am. No, I'm not trying to figure out where you are. I really don't care where you are as long as the job gets right. done. Right. But that vi that dump truck, yeah, I want to know where that is. That's an asset. Yep. It's a hard asset that we might need over there somewhere. So, yep. again, I don't think we have to figure it out tonight, but I would encourage us to at least look at it. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised they're not in the police vehicles and the fire vehicles. I thought we already talked about this, and we're going to do that. Weren't we? Or I just thought it was a given in today's world that they're in those emergency vehicles. So we can track where they are in case an emergency comes up somewhere else. Those topics really clearly are negotiated with the unions. We haven't done that. GPS in our asset <coughs> is negotiated with the unions? Yeah. Says who? Probably the union. Well, there's <laughs> maybe part of the problem. <laughs> All right, fine. You got to figure it out. So I'm going to put my two cents in on Mr. Westerling's mm -hmm. presentation. <clears throat> so like I... I said, I have the, the, the ability to draw from, let's say, 40 years, 35 to 40 years of, of experience of, of being around the environment down there. From the, um, when it was the highway department, <clears throat> when it was um, the water department, there was no sewer department. So, and I've actually had this conversation with Mr. Kamalo a long time ago where we had people in charge of the highway and the water. And we had Bob Bartlett and we had Charlie McIntyre. This is when I was first coming around. Now those two, if you were to go peaks and valleys, those two are Mount Everest. They're the best. That's what you should aspire to be in my eyes. So then we go peaks and valleys. After Mr. Bartlett left, we had a series of people that brought us to a valley and now they've left and you've come in and I think you're doing a good job I wasn't sure you were doing a good job until I got this position but after watching you and, and not you specifically but the process I am convinced that you're doing a good job thank you in order for you to do a good job you have to have good people under you <clears throat> you're two managers for water and sewer I've known my whole life and they're two very hard workers, and they take their job very, very serious. Their foreman, I've also known my whole life, they're pretty hard workers too. The majority of the people that we have working for us are Hopkins residents. When we were first out of high school and embarking on some type of a career, we didn't know if it was going to be rocket science or septic cleaning or hockey, or hockey. <laughs> um, we aspired to be able to get called to work for the deep, for the highway department. As soon as we, we would be hanging out at the fire station as a call guy or a volunteer or whatever, and as soon as we saw a snowflake, we would race down to the highway department. And we would sit around and we would warm dump trucks up and we would put plows on and we would make sure the oil and the snow, blower, uh, snow blowers are changed. And <clears throat> we would work for six or eight hours in hopes that Cookie or Bobby Bartlett would say, Teddy, why don't you jump on S3 and go do South, South Hopkins and don't hit any mailboxes this time. Um, and <clears throat> you would have employees that work down there and most of them are not there now. Some are that would say, I don't work for the town of Hopkins. I work for Bob Bartlett or I work for Charlie McIntyre. I work for Hank Fredette or whomever. You didn't get people saying, I work for Steve Fan. I work for Otto Busher or whatever his name is or JT. 
they didn't like working for those guys. Bobby Barlett was a leader. He led the charge, and if he told you in the morning, he called you into his office and said, hey man, I want you to cut brush from <coughs> Pond Street to Winter Street, then you did Pond Street to Winter Street, and you also tried to get Exchange Street too because you didn't want to disappoint him, and you wanted to get called in the next time that, that there was a, some type of an issue. Um, and that mentality was very, very infectious down there. And it started with the, the, the superintendent, Bobby, it went to Cookie, it went to Swenny, it went to all these people, Bud Terry, all these people that, were, that are no longer there that expected you to do the work with them. And the people that, that ran their, I mean, that, that did their time, they had kind of the easier job. They drove S3 while I jumped out and I, I threw cold patch in the, in the potholes with no cops around and getting beeped at and whatever. But <clears throat> so the point is it used to be such a great, like it was a great place to work. It was. And then morale went down with the leadership. When you came in, you had a tough job, to, you had a tough, tough road ahead of you, so to speak, as a highway guy. Um, you were on Old Granite Street when, when we wanted to be on you know, West Main Street. Um, so I think that you're bringing the morale up, and the reason I think that you're bringing the morale up <clears throat> is you're, you're giving the accolade. A good manager takes responsibility when things go wrong and gives praise when things go right to, to his workers, and I think you're doing that. And, and you're seeing people that worked for the town that left that are now coming back. Mm. And that's important. The, to mor the morale is important because you have less sick days, you have more motivated workers, people that work. You know, if you're in a truck with Gerard, you know you're putting eight hours of work in that day. You know, you know that. And, and um, you know, the camaraderie of, of going out and plowing for four days straight and knowing that <clears throat> they're gonna go down to Carboni's and pick up uh, pizzas and, and pasta after your 40th straight hour, it, it, it's, it was a great feeling to be able to come in there and, and shoot the breeze. And there's so much more to the highway department and to the water and the sewer, which is now the DPW, than just plowing snow. And the presentation that you gave today is great. It touched on a lot of those things. A lot of people just see the plowing of snow. And, and all they, they judge your whole entire DPW based on the fact that when they crossed over from Ashland, mm -hmm. are the roads better in Ashland for the quarter mile before Hopkinton to the quarter mile into Hopkinton, they're basing their whole tax bill based on that quarter mile <clears throat> or mile or whatever it is. So thank you for, for touching everything that you guys do. It's important for the townspeople to know that. I knew that. It's important for the townspeople to know that. And along with Mr. Sestari, I'm gonna say that you're doing a good job. Thank you very much. And I say that not through my own experience, but I say that through a lot of the people that have worked for you for a long time that I'm very friendly with that have come to me and said, this guy came in here, he's here now. So you're, you're motivating your staff and I as a selectman certainly appreciate that and I appreciate you coming in and, and selling the sizzle for the, for the DPW, you did a good job and um, I think that your whole entire department is doing a good job and I like that there's a lot of local people a lot of guys from town that have been here for years, and even like uh, Canister that came in, he's a, he's a, mm -hmm. a Hopkinton guy. I love the fact that you're hiring guys from Hopkinton to work in Hopkinton. I love that. So we stole them from. Brandon. I know, I know. I yeah. may or may not have spoken over beforehand. So, thank you very much. Thank you all for your 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 very kind words and your support, and I will bring those back to the team. Thank okay. you, <laughs> Mr. Catino. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you for stepping up. I really appreciate it. And, and, and John, I just uh, just a few words. You know, I, I know that uh, uh, working as a uh, facility director for the last few years, that um, you know, uh, people only usually find you when something goes wrong, and that's why I always made sure to go out of the out of my way to make sure that they, that that you and the and all of the personnel understand that. Um, uh, that when everything's going well, we should also say something, because you know we, we don't want to just wait for something to <coughs> go wrong before you hear something. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially this spring when when I, I mentioned to you before, when during the winter you used less sand, and in February and March it already looked like we did sweeping, 
that was that was a you know great thing that you did on your part, and um, the roads were still great all winter long, and uh, the spring cleanup was was a heck of a lot easier. So thanks very much. Thank you very much, and through the chair for your for your kind words, but also the uh, not only did the roads look better in the spring, and we used no sand, and we had the material costs were down, but we also saved it approximately four weeks worth of sweeping across town because there was fewer less material to pick up on the side of the road saved on employee costs we were able to do other projects saved on the the maintenance of the equipment and the brooms and the disposal fee so it was a win no new pelican either this year <coughs> okay. okay all Thank right you. well if we don't have anything else i'd like to uh, move along so thanks for your time thank you very much thanks john thank you thank you john thank you, thank you, thank uh, you, john. Thank you very much always fun yeah. um all right, so our next item is the board liaison reports. Uh, anyone have, uh, and board invites, anyone have any liaison reports? Mr. Catino. Uh, well, I went to the, um, uh, the what, what, would you, what would you call that? The, the, the uh, run out for the, for the town on the 25%, uh, the, the town uh, meeting, I guess, at the senior center. And that went uh, really well. It was uh, presented by the uh, uh, the John, the engineers, and uh, they did a great job uh, explaining the 25% uh, and, and where we're going with it, and, and the, the parking changes, and all the all the updates. And uh, a lot of questions were answered. A few more questions came in, and Mr. Kamala will probably comment on it later, also. Okay, Mr. Star. Nothing to report. Mr. Her. Uh, the Twins are leading the Yankees 3 nothing at the moment, so that's a good thing. That's a great thing. Um, I'm looking forward to getting home and watching some October baseball. Uh, as far as liaison reports, nothing since our last meeting last week. Okay, I have nothing. Mr. Kamala, any board invites? Board invites. Um, registration for the 2017 Massachusetts STEM Summit is now open. Um, should you be interested, please let Maria know. Uh, this will be held uh, on November 14th at the TCU Center in Worcester. Okay. And then there's also a free workshop on f working forests and resilient streams. Uh, this is going to be September 30th, Hanson, Massachusetts. That was four days four ago. Four days ago, sorry. Move along. Yeah, move along. <coughs> MAPC Fall Council meeting, October 25th, 2017, and this is going to be at the Quincy Marriott. Um, and then there was also, there's also an invitation and, and re regarding the annual labor relations seminar. Usually this is for HR directors. Uh, we just wanted to share this with the board for your information. And I know, in fact, uh, um, we have several uh, department heads will be will be attending this year. Good. And then I think the, the rest of the announcements. I think we we did share this with the board at your last meeting. Okay. Yeah. How about a town manager's report? Since town, you have the floor. Yes, town manager's report. Just very quickly, um, the towns. Compensation plan is now two years old. Mm -hmm. uh, our goal was to make sure that we update it every two years. I just wanted to let the board know that I have started uh, my initial discussions with the personnel committee, uh, discussing approach, um, also realizing the fact that there's a wealth of information that we've collected over the last two years, including updating our job descriptions. So I'll continue to work with the personnel committee and report back to the board. Duly noted. Nice yeah. job. Is that it? That's it. Future board agenda items. I'm all set. Mr. Sestari. Hey, I pretty much wrote the agenda tonight, so. Did a good job. <laughs> Someone <laughs> else's turn. <laughs> Mr. Hur? <coughs> I'm all set for now. Thank you. Sadly, I am all set. Yeah. So. Um, so, with that said, it looks like we're all set. I uh, move to adjourn for a future board uh, for future agenda item, uh, taking care of goals and objectives and oh, reviews yeah. for our uh, leadership group. I look forward to that. All right, so uh, select uh, the uh, chair will 
So moved. Second. And we're out. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank you.